Yeah, so it is it is officially started. So mm -hmm. everyone that was saying section 31 is never gonna happen. This is just an announcement to keep well, Michelle Yeoh on the books. It, it's the movie no one wanted to happen, right? Like, like, like this is something where it's like right. start off as a TV series, then when she won the Oscar, she was too expensive and her schedule, you know, clamped up, and so like they're like, oh, we'll just make it into a movie, even though nobody liked this character, nobody cared about Section Thirty One and her involvement in it. Nobody wants this. Nobody's interested in this. Yeah. It's a spinoff of one of the worst Star Trek TV series ever. Yeah, but to be fair. Michelle Yeoh does play the job of Giorgio very well. She's very yeah, but good. You know what? So, so like originally, like she was like what Captain so and so, Captain Giorgio, um, Captain Giorgio, and that character was actually kind of interesting right. because you know she was the mentor character to Michael Burnham, and she was also kind of like the voice of sanity uh, when Michael Burnham was just like you know going off the rails. And then they killed her off and they're like, we probably shouldn't have killed her off. How can we bring her back? Oh, let's bring her back as like the mirror universe version. And people forget that her character is a genocidal racist maniac who eats Kelpians, which is actually something in her favor. But uh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Yeah. Genocidal, racist, fascist dictator. Yeah. About yeah. 10 times worse than mass Hitler. Murderer. Mass, mass murderer. murderer. Like millions murdered. And she literally eats the sentient people that bring her her food her, her yeah. slaves she enslaves an entire race of people and casually eats them when she gets bored like she's a fucking monster and and she's the one who wanted to blow up the klingon homeworld you know with a bomb and stuff like that and like people forget that this is a horrible character and the idea that that this was the most powerful woman in the entire universe of her mirror universe and now she's just like cool with like being like a spy and saving the planet from like, you know, like uh, clandestine uh, threats. I'm, I'm like, where where do people in, in what world does this make sense? She, she should be the big bad that like Starfleet has to team up. She should be the Thanos. She should be the, the yeah. Star Trek world. You right. Know? She should be the yeah. She should be like bringing her forces into our universe to take over another universe. Yeah, she should be like the, the worst, the worst. No, you know what's crazy is you're completely right on everything you just said, 100%. And I, I, I also find it, I also find it ridiculous that this character went from that character into that. But I didn't like her in both or all three of those characters. And while I hated Discovery, I liked, I liked Michelle Yeoh. I she, just, I just remember Yum Yum. That's just <laughs> the Kelpian thing. I, no, 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 no. It's like she's fighting alongside one of the uh the discovery crew mm -hmm. the, the girl the girl with like the weird mouth thing that yeah breathing. and and like and she's like do you have an appetite for violence and the girl's just like yum yum it's like it's one of the most cringy moments of, of star trek discovery and there are a lot of those um but it, like nothing about this character makes me want to watch like her own standalone adventure no i i will say this though that the guy who is behind the movie who's writing and producing the movie he basically was the showrunner and creator of limitless the tv show oh movie. love that and so like he wrote the entire run of of limitless really and yeah and and he, he's got a couple of other things under his belt which are pretty good so like i'm fairly confident that the fact that he wrote this and he's producing it and uh, the director seems like a very typical like tv director like he's just directed a lot of tv episodes right but he, but he directed a couple episodes of discovery which is how i think he got this job i think that like the talent they got behind it is fairly good but I, again it's like a ray skywalker movie nobody asked for this nobody's super into this character right you know, I, I just finished watching uh, The Brother's Son on Netflix, which was Michelle Yeoh's other big Netflix TV series. I didn't like it. Oh, I thought it was great. I didn't I like, like it. it. I couldn't get into it. But but she was basically playing like, like a different version of Giorgio in that show. Right. Where she where she was like this very like brilliant, manipulative uh, crime queen pin, essentially. And I feel like this is just going to be more of the same of that. Like, I don't like Michelle Yeoh playing bad parts. I feel like she's better when, when she's like almost like everything everywhere all at once where she's like, you know, she's someone who's trying to do good, you know? Right. So, but I can't believe you didn't like brother son, man. That was such a good. Yeah. Show. I mean, I, I, I only watched the first two episodes and I couldn't really get into it. Maybe I need to watch more. Maybe I need to force like this new, this new binge culture that we're in where it was like, well, the show doesn't get good until the seventh episode. You're like, what the F I got to go that far in order to, 
so many people keep telling me like hey you gotta check out succession it's really good and i watch like two episodes and i'm like i don't know what you're looking i don't know what what you're i usually for. i usually give a tv show five episodes before i Jeez, decide bro, to that's like five hours it. it's like five hours of your life it, it it is but typically like you know like i'm not doing anything else in those five hours so i might as well give a new tv show a try uh, but I, I thought that the brother's son just from episode one was very engaging for me because the, the, the fight scenes were amazing. Mm -hmm. I liked uh, the whole triad, like kind of like uh, culture, like there, there was like this mysterious organization, which was trying to bring down the triad. And I was like, Ooh, what are these guys? And, and the only thing I didn't really care for was the, the other brother, like the normal brother type guy, but he mm -hmm. kind of grew on me over the course of the season. Um, but it was great acting. It was, it was awesome fight scenes. Like I, re I really enjoyed it. The thing I'm worried about with Star Trek though, is they don't have good fight scenes. No, <laughs> they, they, uh, this is going to be set in the fucking discovery universe time yep. era. Like, like it's, it, it, I'm like, can she just go and eat all the Kelpians again to prevent them from, <laughs> from having a temper tra tantrum that destroys space travel? I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. It's, um, I, yeah, I, I'm I'm not really interested in this. Well, well, last time we saw her, wasn't she at like uh, what was that? She was um, forced to go back to yeah the mirror universe. No, no, she wasn't forced to go back in the mirror universe. It was like the what's that gate? Yeah, yeah, the, uh, yeah. Oh God, I, I had it in my head and now it's gone. It's Gateway of Forever, turning, something or turning. Gateway of Forever. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what it was. Yeah, but it was like and a like, person. It wasn't like a gate. It was like a person. It was like a sentient thing. Well, it was both. It was right, like it was the both gate pr projected a dude. Yeah. who represented it, its consciousness or something right. like that. And I don't think they sent her back to the mirror universe. I think that they actually sent her like back in time. Guardian of Forever. And it was, she was sent back in time to the mirror universe. Are you sure? Yes. I'm, I, I'm, I'm missing something. Almost positive. The Guardian of Forever sent her because she walks in with like the evil Michael Burnham in her universe still alive. Okay, I might have blocked that out because Discovery is such a... Yeah, I don't even know. You know what? Someone <laughs> in the chat does. Last, if I remember correctly, they sent her both back in time and to the Mirror Universe because she was dying of like... She was like... Uh, so uh, the way the Mirror Universe works, it's like a branch and it starts to branch off as time goes on. So like it meant here and that's where she crossed over. And the farther away the branch gets, the more, the sicker she gets. But that is stupid well also you know what that means it means that her story is going to be set in a timeline that has no effect on any of the other star trek that we're watching right now so it's like why are we even right. bothering watching this elseworld alternate universe story with, with giorgio who if she goes back to the mirror universe isn't she still emperor like why is she joining section 31 in this other timeline wait so someone said that someone's saying they sent her back in time so, so I guess at some point she went to the mirror universe, then they sent her back in time. So she came, she went not a thousand years into the future. And I guess that was so far away from the branch time that was making her sick. So then they sent her back in time. We don't know when, but we're assuming. So back in time, that's it. We never saw. Okay. All right. So she went, she's going back in time. Of course, of course, of course, to, to like prequel before the original series, yeah. she's going to run. She's gonna Enterprise be the, Arrow. Yeah, she's gonna start Section Thirty One. Discovery is once again inserting themselves into the origin story of 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 set in stone things in the Star Trek universe via time travel, like with Michael Burnham all of a sudden being Spock's sister, and now they're gonna send Giorgio. She's gonna be the one who starts Section Thirty One, and all dude, we're probably gonna see all kinds of callbacks to like DS Nine enterprise all the time section 31 showed up it was probably she was probably the one involved and and you know they're gonna put the borg in there somewhere just yeah because. yeah and she's gonna have some reference oh this looks like control we know how to deal with them oh god you're making me mad you're making me mad right now I, it's it's kurtzman trek man like like the worst thing you can think of that's what they're going to do that's crazy you're totally right they didn't show where she went they didn't show where she went so she's just gonna they're just gonna send her back do whatever they want just to mess with us. Oh, so when so when they did that, that was basically a threat. They're like, buckle up, buckaroo. Yeah, they're gonna erase. Yeah, I gotta, that's a, let's erase Captain Kirk. Let's let's just fix all the things that we think is wrong with Star Trek with Emperor Giorgio, the mass murdering, you know, Hitler-esque, Kelpian eating, yeah. eating monster. 
it, you know what? makes complete sense. You know what? Let's give her blue hair and put a put a put a rainbow f- uh, pin on her on her chest. Now, let's, if, let's just make her like the the proxy for the left, destroying anything in history that they didn't like. Let's just do now, that. If, if, if Giorgio went back in time and ate the Kelpian who created the burn, I'd be down with that. Yeah, because because she would have prevented that whole timeline from existing. <laughs> What, what, wait, what if they use her to stop discovery from happening? <laughs> Ooh, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Imagine that. that. Imagine Alex Kurtzman just like, you know what? Failed experiment. Let's just erase it. Oh, dude, I, I would, I would give. I, I would honestly, I'd be like, you know what, Alex? We're cool. We're cool now. No problem. You, you good? Yeah. I, I, I'd he, have he, her. He go was back. responsible for Limitless. I love that show. Yeah, I'll, I'd have her go back and erase the first two seasons of Picard. <laughs> Wrong time to take a drink, Brian. <laughs> just, she's, gonna, she's, she's like, she's like doing the Deadpool thing where she's like going back yeah. through yeah, random she, times and just go, uh, erasing really bad ideas. Yeah. Like, uh, nope, Picard, you are not going to be a robot. Kick down the machine. <laughs> he just rips her out. Nope. You are not Data's sister. Go back to him. He's just killing everyone that makes no sense. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> you are not going back in time to get arrested by ICE. Hey, nope. No, sir. <laughs> no. Oh, man. So Section 31 is a pretty popular uh, organization in Star Trek. But they're supposed to be mysterious. That's what makes them popular. Right. right? They're not like, supposed to have badges. They're supposed to look like any other Starfleet yeah, you, you don't see, you don't see their like meetings. It's not like what was it, Andor? You know the Star Trek show where you get to see like the Imperial intelligence right. meetings where they're talking about stuff and conspiring and all that right. stuff. It's like occasionally an agent will show up. He's like super mysterious, and he'll like you know be the puppet master behind the scenes. <laughs> right. You know. No, it's like that's what, and I love uh, one thing I love about Enterprise is they showed the origins of Section Thirty One. Uh, via that, via like the constitution or whatever of the Federation. And it was a really cool setup to it. But you're right. They're not supposed to actually, we're not supposed to know they're Section 31. They're mm-hmm. supposed to, and just like an Enterprise, remember, they were, they were trying to recruit uh, Malcolm, Malcolm Reed, to be one of their members, not to wear a black badge and leave Enterprise, but to be part of the organization given. But Dr. Bashir, right? Right. In DS9. It's like like they just come in. They're they're like the CIA, where like they just recruit assets to do their dirty work for them. Right. And they're 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 just kind of like behind the scenes and stuff like that. Yeah. What does the black badge look like? Someone will see it. But but y- y- you know this whole Section Thirty One TV show slash movie idea was was Kurtzman's baby. It was like his idea, and he's like, oh yeah, we're gonna do this. And anything that comes from Kurtzman is instantly bad. You just know it is. So yeah. Here's here's the badge. This is from Trek Core. Here it is. So a lot of people keep saying they don't looks wear like black of, badges. I'm like it looks like one of those black black and white cookies. Yeah, they do. They wear black badges for some reason. They're black and like silver. And this is from this is a, this is an actual badge. I don't know. We keep saying that that they don't wear black badges. They one hundred percent do wear the black badges. Yeah, and, and I like the way it always, looks, but they're not supposed to. You always want your covert agents to advertise who they're working for. <laughs> right, right. Imagine, imagine you're working for the CIA and you're wearing a badge that says spy on it. <laughs> well, well, it's it's like all the hey, FBI agents out there. Ambassador, pretending would like, you like to see these paperwork? <laughs> yeah. It's like all the FBI agents out there pretending to be white supremacists wearing FBI jackets as they're doing it. <laughs> right, right. Um, imagine, yeah, like, like they're, they're, they're trying to kidnap a governor. They're like, we're just good old boys. We're my good old boys. Like, hey, what's up with the FBI? Yeah. Athletic gra- yeah. you know, grays yeah, there. Why, are, why is your FBI badge on, on your swastika? <laughs> you're, 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 so they're wearing the FBI, the lanyard thing with their badge. It has their, yeah, it wouldn't, make, it wouldn't work. Covert is covert. I don't know. Maybe they get it right. And maybe we're maybe, maybe we're choking on our words. I mean, I mean honestly, Brian, I, I think that even if they do get it right, nobody's going to freaking watch this. Like if you look at the news, Paramount plus just laid off like a bunch of people. It looks like uh, they're trying to get sold off to some other company or uh, investor. And you know, people just are tired of Star Trek. Like you have your hardcore Star Trek fan base, but for the normies out there, it's like, they don't care. They don't care anymore. Right. We got so much bad Star Trek in these past couple of years that it's just like, nobody gives a crap about new Star Trek, you know? No, I completely agree. I agree. And the biggest part, the biggest problem with it is that and this is the big, this is the biggest rub. This is the, this is the thing that bothers me the most is that they know what they need to do to please almost everyone. Like they know the path forward. 
Like they do. You, I, I refuse to believe that they don't have access to the same exact analytics we do or better or probably much better. And they can see that how successful Picard season three was, how successful lower decks is, how successful prodigy was in comparison to just about everything else they released. It, just doing doing that basic math for a just a, a just one day of research i refuse to believe that they don't know exactly what they need to do to go forward hey if you like this clip and you want to see more then click right here and become a member today also we do a live show every monday wednesday and friday at 10 a.m pacific standard time totally free so come on down and hang out with us every monday wednesday and friday at 10 a.m pacific standard time we'll see you there